All right, hi Ben from Planet Earth. We received your transmission. We got your questions and we are going to do our best to answer them. My name is Julia and here we are at the Mars Desert Research Station. We're actually in Utah. Um, but we're pretending that we are on Mars so we can get a good practice of what it would feel like to actually go to Mars. So, I have your questions right here. We're gonna uh, answer them. It might be a little bit out of order of how you ask them, um, but the first one we're gonna answer is how do you eat on Mars? Um, so when we go to Mars, we have to take all, a lot of our food with us until we have the chance to grow it on Mars. So we have to use a lot of freeze-dried food. And it, to explain that, I'm gonna turn you over to some of my crewmates. Over here we have Ryan, Dr. Ryan Kobrick, and uh, we call him Cat for short. <laughs> Tatsunari from Japan. There you go. You can see it's all dried up beef. You just add water, usually hot water, so you can cook it on the stove with lots of ingredients and spices. This is the banana tips. It's like pretty much similar to like what we eat and as a banana tips. Is yeah. it good? Crunchy. So they're freeze dried, so that means they take all of the water out of them. They, these can last 30 years on a shelf. So these are... I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd want to actually wait that long, <laughs> mm. but uh, we have to add water to these. Uh, sometimes with the banana chips, we can just eat them straight mm -hmm. up. They're a snack to go. And they're yeah. really tasty. Uh, the way we cook here, uh, we have a kitchen that probably looks similar to yours. Uh, we have a toaster oven, sink, stove, a, a water kettle. We even have a, a, what do we call these, a crock pot. Um, coffee maker, very, very, very important, yes. Uh, and actually hiding over there, uh, we have a bread maker, a microwave, and just your standard refrigerator. So that's how we eat on Mars. All right, for your next question, um, how do you sleep on Mars? Do we sleep on the walls, like zipped up on the walls like they do on the International Space Station? Well, it turns out there's still, there's uh, quite some gravity on Mars. I'm gonna show you uh, our bedrooms that we have here on the Mars Desert Re Research Station. And here's Ryan. All right, so here is Julia's room actually. And you can see it's very similar to a bunk bed. Underneath Julia, down there, that's actually where my room is. So they fit together like Lego pieces. And I heard you like Lego, Lego's awesome. Hello. <laughs> anyway, uh, on Mars, the gravity is about one third of what it's like on Earth. So that means that you can, everything you do is a little bit different. Um, it's like you can jump really high and we're gonna show you how you can jump really high. You ready? Three, two, one, and jump! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Boom! Wow! Woo! Uh, that was a good jump. And uh, <laughs> what, what is the gravity on Mars? So it's 0.38 or 0 0.38 times Earth. So about one third. Awesome. So we actually don't sleep zipped on the walls like we do on the International Space Station. We um, just sleep in normal beds. Okay, to answer your next questions, we are going to have to go downstairs. So right now we're on the upper deck of the Mars Desert Research Station habitat. This is where we all sleep, where we hang out, and where we eat, and where we cook. So now to answer the, your next questions of how do you go to the bathroom on Mars, and how do you breathe and go outside on Mars, we're going to have to go downstairs. So to show you how small our uh, cabin is, we're going to watch as Tat goes down the stairs, and it's... Hello. Pretty like, different. Um, yep. It's pretty steep. You have to be really careful. And it's almost like a ladder. Okay. Nice work, Tat. So here we are going downstairs. I want to show you the lower deck. And we're going to get to meet another one of our crew members, Dr. Sarah Jane Pelf, all the way from Australia. Hi. This is, we're talking to Ben, a five-year-old, all the way from planet Earth. Hi, Ben. It's lovely to chat with you. Thank you for joining us here on Mars. And we have two more questions we need to answer. Um, the first one is about going to the bathroom on Mars. <laughs> a very hot topic in space. So the way we do it on Earth, you know, we just go into a toilet. And we actually have toilets here on the Mars Desert Research Station. But the way they do it on the International Space Station is they have to, kind of like taking your recycling out, you have to separate your uh, plastic from your cardboard. 
uh, we would have to separate our solids from our liquids. Um, so we can show you our bathroom here. It's just a regular toilet, but probably on Mars we would separate our liquids from our solids. We would use our solids probably to help fertilize using uh, kind of like compost to help fertilize our plants. Um, and we would recycle our liquids to use it for drinking water and other things like they do on the International Space Station. Sarah, would you like to show us the bathroom here? Please, come with me. It's very luxurious. <laughs> so we have a normal toilet system here, like one that you might see at home, but there's a, some small differences. When we open up, you can look down. Somebody's we use a foot pedal instead of a hand pedal, and with my foot, I can oh, send everything down, but I can also use the foot pedal to slowly fill the system with water, and that helps flush. We also, if I was seated, have to imagine <laughs> that we have two different systems here. One is normal toilet paper, but because of the waste treatment system being local, it doesn't go to a city. We're here on Mars, it's just going straight into the ground. We don't want to block up the pipes. So when we take our paper waste, we use it and then very carefully put it in our bin beside us rather than sending it down with the water. We also have some wet wipes. I don't know if you're familiar with wet wipes. You might have those at home as well. And we can use those when we need them. And when we're finished with the wet wipe, we don't send that down, but we know that we put the dry things here and the wet things, we put them here so that they can dry out a bit before we send them off for burning because wet things don't dry very well. They need to be dried first before they burn. And then you feel a lot better <laughs> after you've done all that. And if you can see, we have here heating that comes down from a pipe and warms the seat for us. So even though the toilet is not as nice as the one that we would have at home on Earth, the heater makes us feel like we have a little bit of comfort here. All right. Well, thank you very much for that detailed tour of the bathrooms here on Mars. <laughs> Over and out. Over and out. Okay, Ben, for your last question, you ask, how do you go outside on Mars and how do you breathe? So we're going to have Tat show us how we're going to uh, do that. We have to wear special suits and we have to go through an airlock. Uh, first, we have to wear our flight suits that look like this. We have to wear boots. We have to wear these gaiters to protect us from the dust. And then we have to wear our spacesuits and helmets. And they are a two-piece system. And we're gonna have Tat uh, actually demonstrate how to put one on. They're pretty heavy. They're about 30 pounds. Sure, yeah. So here is the neck ring, and it's metal, and I'll go get to you okay. on it. And he has a strap up, and each suit has been customized to fit each person by adjusting these straps. And next we put on the helmet, very, very carefully. You can see that it latches right here. And there's two latches in the back to make sure no Martian atmosphere gets into our suits. And I'll leave that one for now. And then we have to connect our air supply. Really important because these don't have their own oxygen. They screw on like this. It takes a bit. And then we actually have to turn on the air supply to do that pretty quickly so Tat can breathe normally. 
Are you feeling the air tap? Yeah? Okay, so we're gonna quickly do that to the other side. Let me lock this up. And I can feel a nice airflow coming out here. And this airflow also helps us with the mask fogging. It can fog when we're breathing heavy, so this airflow is really nice. It comes from here, goes through these pipes. And once we're all ready, we have gloves on too, uh, we're gonna go out into the airlock. This is the door to our airlock. This is the boundary between our habitat and the hostile environment on Mars. So Tat is gonna bravely go into our airlock. And you can see it's a really small room. And we have to do this to depressurize, to have the same kind of atmospheric pressure as they would on Mars. So we close this and we wait five minutes for the, uh, this room to depressurize. And once we're done with that, Tat is free to go outside and explore the Martian surroundings. Do you want to come see? So it's a chilly day here on Mars. And to explore the Martian surroundings, we have a bunch of fun vehicles we get to explore on. We have four ATVs over here, all-terrain vehicles, and we have some rovers, which are electric vehicles. You can see some of their fun names, Curiosity, Spirit, and Deimos. And we can take them to explore the, the hills and surroundings on Mars. And that's how you go outside and how you breathe on Mars. And I hope we answered all of your questions. Uh, if you have any more, uh, you can try and email us, but we might be back on Earth by that time. We hope to see you on Mars one day. This is Crew 188 signing off.